not only did I buy this car from Bradford, not only did I buy this car at a distance without having seen it, not only was it buying it from someone who'd inherited it from someone else, it also had no keys. And I'm hoping we can go and get this car started today. <laughs> Oh, Christ. <laughs> so let me tell you how we came about getting this car. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. I got an email, as I quite often do, from a subscriber of the channel. This was a chap called Iklas. He'd lost a family member, and they'd left him this car in their will. He'd sorted out clearing off some money off of it, etc and he was interested to know whether I would want to buy it. He said he's got no keys for it, but he has got the logbook and he has got paperwork, but uh, yeah, can't find the keys. Would I still be interested? And I said, well, yes, but uh, I'd have to give you quite a low price. He said, well, what do you think? I looked into it, did my research on Auto Trader, and I thought the sort of normal trading price that I would give for that car would have been about 4,000, maybe 4,500 if it was in running order, had an MOT and all that sort of stuff, because ours doesn't. And I said, look, as it is, two grand, and I would pick it up from Bradford. And to my surprise, he went for it, which it may have been another kind of warning sign. But I'm fairly hopeful this is going to pan out. So it's been sat down the land now for about a month, maybe. It had been sat for at least six months, if not 12 before that on the driveway of the person who'd left it to Iglis in their will. I've got a new battery because it's definitely going to need one of those. And what I've actually managed to do was to speak to BMW or Mini Virtue and to order a new key fob and a new key blade. So theoretically, we should just be able to put the battery in the car, put the key in, and it should fire up. But there are a few things that could cause us some problems. One problem is the key and the fob that BMW have provided might not work. Now it is for this car and it 100% will work other than there's like a limit of how many keys you can have on there. And I think it's about six. So assuming they had three keys and they lost those and they had three more made and they filled up those six slots, there's no way that a replacement key will work for it, they tell us. I'm hopeful that they won't have done that because it's quite a lot of spare keys to have got, isn't it, for a car that I think is only on about 50,000 miles, but we will find out. The second problem is they might have deliberately lost the keys because the engine's completely knackered. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Until we get a battery on here and try and start it up, we won't know. I was kind of reassured by Iklas that it did run when it was parked up, but he did want to say, he thought it did, and that's what he was told, and he doesn't have personal experience, and he wanted to be completely honest with me. So it is a big gamble because it's going to need brakes. It's going to need probably tyres all around. It's going to need a seriously good clean. Um, and if the engine's knackered, it's going to end up pretty much like the other one I've got over there, the Mini Countryman, where the turbo slash timing chain went on us. And it's basically worthless. Um, without an engine. Yes, we could put one in and it would be okay and we would have a margin here, but time and effort, um, probably not worth it. Before we start trying to do the battery, I'm pretty sure it's on that side, right over by our dead Shogun here. So I'm gonna tow it out with the winch so that we can have a quick look around it, see what we've got before we try and get it started. Let's have a little walk around it. It is doom blue in the motor trade. That's what we call this blue. It's kind of like a flat blue, not very metallic or pearlescent. But being a paceman, it's quite a cool car. I think pacemans are quite cool. Toby doesn't. Didn't like our other one. He's shaking his head, but I don't see why not. Little mini coupe thing. We're going to need to get 100% new discs and pads all the way around because they've been stood up that long. They're just pitted and scored and whatever. Tires. Let's have a look at the age. I'm never very good at checking out the age on these things. Uh, 0820, so only 2020, so they're four years old, but they're looking a little bit parish. That one is anyway. It's not a particularly premium brand. What is it? Uh, it's a triangle, Advantex. Bodywork looks okay though. You can see someone's had a quick go at 
washing the roof, but not the whole thing. Maybe just want to have a quick look and check it, I guess. We've got a different tire on the back. We've got a Bridgestone on the back. I wonder what age. That one's got far less tread on it. That is illegal, basically, I would say. Let's see if I can find an age on that. I mean, 36, 14, that's not going to be it, is it? Because, I don't know. I don't know. We're going to say it's old anyway. Around the back, looks okay. You can see that it came from an available car at some point. It's not going to open up because it's electric and we've got no battery power. A little bit of a scratch around here, but that will polish out for sure. I can't catch it with my nail. That's usually your telltale. If you can catch it with your nail, it means it's gone through the lacquer and you probably won't be able to do anything with it, but I think we will with that. This tire is perished to high hill. Look at that, bloody hell. It's not usually a good sign when you can push in the sidewall like that. What is it, a Zeta, a Zeta Zeta. This front one, we have got another triangle of Antex. So they probably changed those both at the same time. Again, looking a bit perished. Treads, not terrible, probably like three or four mil, four mil probably, but it does feel quite sort of, I don't know how to explain it, but quite hard, like toughened. It's not a nice soft rubber anymore. It feels like hard and plasticky. But again, bodywork looks all right. So cosmetically, it looks okay. Hopefully they've got our towing eye cap somewhere. Let's disconnect this quickly and get it out of the way. Let's have a look inside. This is normally the part where I'd say we've got one key or two key and I'll show you what it looks like, but obviously we haven't. We've got the ones in our bag over there, but we'll get to those in a minute. It's meant to have something like 50 or 55,000 miles. It stinks like a rotten old cabbage inside. That's probably because it's been sat up, so that's understandable. But the seat is very frayed on the front here. I, I, God knows how that's happened. Especially on low mileage of that, unless there's, that's something specific to someone who's driven this car. Like maybe someone who wore like Wellington boots or a woman who wore boots or something that would be up here and rubbing. Can't see why else they'd be like that. In the back, you just get your two seats. God, yeah, it really stinks. And it's going to need a seriously good valet. Mark's going to love this one. But we haven't got a sat-nav or anything like that, but we have got air conditioning, CD radio. I wonder if we're going to have any fuel in here or not. Stop-start as well. That's why I had to buy a stop-start AGM battery. The panel is off of the fuse box as well down here. That's the most concerning thing I've seen so far. Why is it off? Were they having problems beforehand? For all I know, although I have done a vehicle score check on this and we'll get to that in a minute, this could just be a car that someone bought. They realized it was knackered and they couldn't start it. So they made up some story that it belonged to their uncle and whatever, and they got the V5 and they haven't got the keys. So we can't test the engine. Am I being pessimistic or am I? Well, no, I've been stitched up loads by people. So we all just have to find out what have we got down here. books. Front pad's changed in 2017. That's good to know. We have got a service book. Imagine if we find services in here at like 150,000 miles. Oh no, that's the date. I, I was reading 170517. I was like 170,000 miles. Surely not. But that's the date. That was back in 2017. So that is the last time we seem to have had service stamped, which was a genuine mini one. And that was at 23,000 miles. Let's have a look in here, see if we've actually got an engine. Oh yeah, there it is. Filthy. Oh. Dipstick is out. That looks properly like thick and black as night. I've got a bit of oil here, so we can clean that up and check that before we try and start it. We've had rats living under here. Look, that's rat shit. We have got coolant though, that's a good sign. And I think it looks pretty clean. Yeah, it looks all right. It's like a, a blue coolant. Spider living in the cap as well. Our battery is under here, which means I've got to take all this plastic stuff off. I don't really like doing this sort of stuff, but I haven't got anyone else to do it. And Macaulay changed one on this red one the other day. Macaulay can do it, surely I can do it. But probably not actually, but I'll get some tools and we'll try and get in there.
Right, that is the battery in. I haven't put the covers or anything back on. I mean, I did try, but it was way too fiddly. So that's a job for someone with a lot more patience than I have. So we've got power. I heard modules and things make noises. So that's good. I want to check the oil. And then I guess we want to know whether we've got any fuel in here or not, but we won't know that till we try it. Try that to start. What's your predictions, Toad? You reckon it's going to fire up? You reckon Iklus has done me a solid and he's not ripped me off? The good news is if it does fire up and we clean it up, we, you know, give it a PDI, put it through an MOT and sort out probably the endless amounts of problems that comes with cars that have been sitting around. I keep telling myself, don't buy cars that have been sat around and not in use because you end up with more problems than you think you're going to have. Anyway, it's about a £7,000 retail car. So if we've bought it for 2000 even if we spend 2000 on it, it would bring it to about the price that, well, not even cheaper than the price I would have paid for it trade or part exchange as a running, driving, whatever. So we'd be quids in. It would have been well worth doing. If not, if it doesn't start, or it starts and it, I don't know, it might billow smoke out. If it hasn't been started for a long time, it probably will. But if it runs like a bag of crap, then I've probably lost, don't know, don't even know what I get for this. It doesn't seem to really be working its way around yet. Do we really need that much more? It's just glugging away. That's what you do with oil, right? You just brim it, just fill her up. Is that because this engine is seized rock solid, therefore it's not getting through? At least now we'll know it has got some oil in, even if it's not registering on the dipstick. It might just be that it's not working its way around because this engine hasn't turned over in so long. It's still like not even to the minimum. But I think we're just going to have to try it and then we can check the oil again after. We'll just find out whether this thing actually cranks over. So let's go and get our key. All we had to do to get these keys from BMW, which totaled, in fact, the invoice is here, £187.64, including the VAT. So really, cost to us £156.37 for a fob, which is all you really need to start this. But it did come with a blade to fit in, should you need that to get in the car. Should we see if the locking works? Well, it made some kind of noise, didn't it? But no light. We might need to be plugged into the car first to kind of say hello. I don't know. Make sure it's not in gear. Oh, okay. We've got radio. It's got an airbag warning light. Unsurprising, we're probably going to get a million and one faults. Right, let's try it then. Squeaky. Right, it turns over, that's the main thing. Do we have, it's telling us we've got four low tires. It did flash up with the mileage, which was 54,000 something. So we're pretty good on that. Why will it not tell me what the fuel is unless it's trying to turn over? I have got some diesel here, so I'll try it one more time and then I'll put some diesel in. Cause for all we know, if it's been sat on a driveway in Bradford for a year, could well have all been siphoned off. Apologies, Bradfordonians. Right, stop. It, when it was going then, it said it just under half a tank of fuel. But where is the fuel flap on this? Let's go and get some diesel because if it's really old, it might not be wanting to fire. You never thought you'd see the day you see me get my hands dirty, did you? There you go. Oh, it's not going to let me. It might just trickle around it anyway, to be fair. I guess a professional would completely drain out the fuel tank and then put a fresh diesel in, but. Oh, and the oil, yeah, but I mean, just to prove the point that we can get it to turn over, I suppose we should check the oil level now. Now that it has turned over several times. It's still not like, it's still like halfway to the minimum. Surely, I guess we put more in. I mean, if it's been sat that long, maybe it's got an oil leak and it just leaked out. Could have turned into sludge. Yeah, or it could have just 
literally burnt it all off the last time it was on the road. Maybe it was a runaway diesel. The turbo just ate all the oil. They parked it up. They threw away the keys and they phoned some absolute cretin to come and buy it. That's where I come in. That's a good two and a half to three litres I've put in now. I mean, is the dipstick not attached? What's going on? Mm, it might slowly, very minimally be moving up, but I think that's a job for the mechanics. Let's just be really ignorant and just keep turning it over and see if it'll fire up. This is the time, Toby. I can feel it in my bones. Hey! It. <laughs> that was short-lived. Uh, it wouldn't rev. It's clicking. Okay. It's trying to rev. Well, it wasn't pouring smoke out the back then, was it? I'll fire it up again and just keep an eye on the exhaust, see if you've got a load of smoke coming out or anything. Any minute now. Hey! Oh God, that made some horrible noises. It was probably just like pulleys and things. That sounds lovely. Power steering's working. It probably just needs a little minute to warm up, you know, get used to running again. It's like, Jesus Christ, I haven't moved in like 18 months. Yes. Oh, it's starting to smell a little bit now, isn't it? It's probably all that oil we're burning. Well, there are some signs of life, I think. realistically leave it there but we managed to buy a key from mini put it in this car that we bought for two thousand pounds and get it running and i'm very confident that the mechanics back at barrow motors can get this sorted out it probably wants like a fuel filter doesn't it probably want all the air filters a complete oil change obviously and a serious valet as well as well as brakes and probably every part under the car known to man but i'm dead chuffed with that so We'll leave it there. We'll try and conclude this video where we've actually got it cleaned up and I'm doing a test drive in it. God knows when that'll be, but for you, it'll be like in about 30 seconds. So I'll see you then. Right, this isn't how I wanted this video to end, to be honest. Right, well, welcome back to the Barrow Scrapyard. It's not looking very good here at the minute, is it? With the front end off the CRV that we're sorting out and our wonderful, paceman that was an absolute bargain but not really do we think we were deliberately stitched up with this or was it an honest mistake you probably would have seen by now the guys have had this in the workshop they had the whole engine out they were checking everything out because we thought we were going to have to put a new turbo on it a new timing chain we're going to do a new clutch and flywheel so we had about two thousand pounds worth of parts which sounds a lot even with a lot of labor but we thought you know worst case scenario Say it was £2,000 for the car, £2,000 for parts, and £1,000 of labour, it's five grand, it's still worth seven. It would have been worth it, especially so you guys could see us, you know, bring this back to life. But one thing has stopped this dead in its tracks and made me really reconsider going any further with this than we are currently. So this is our engine. We got it out so that we could change the turbo and timing chain and all the good stuff that you'd want to have done if you were going to go to the effort of you know, rebuilding a car and recommissioning it. But when they got it out and then took the head off, we were greeted by this, which I have only seen in like TikToks and Instagram reels. I've never seen stodgy oil like that. In fact, let me go and get a screwdriver or something. So you can see, oh my God. Just like, you don't have to be a mechanical genius to realize that's not good. All the oil was completely congealed. The crankshafts 
are foobard really because they got rust on it seems like you know they're not something you really just clean up they got rusty they've got pitted ideally you want new ones because anything could have happened to them but look at the oil i don't know why it would have done that why do you reckon it would have gone like this dan oh like that so it's lack of servicing um but and then what's happened is the oil galleries have started to get clogged up um, and then the actual feed to the turbo, which is somewhere, is completely, it's completely blocked against the turbo. And it's, it's, yeah, that's then got water, that's water. So, yeah, we think mainly down to lack of maintenance. And as a result of that, oil ways and galleries and everything have blocked up. And somehow it's got water in it, maybe the head gasket's gone, I don't know, and it's just made this disgusting glue. Now, we could have that professionally cleaned out, put two new crankshafts in it, we've already got the timing chain kit, put a new turbo in it, new chain in it, but we're probably talking, you know, a week's worth of labour, and I just, just don't want to. I mean, we could fix this all up and still have maybe, maybe £2,000 worth of uh profit in it let's say it costs us five grand all in but then it's still a bit rough on the inside isn't it we need to sort that seat out we'll still need an mot and for all we know might have other things that it fails on due to rust or whatever and just can't be bothered we've got more important things to do i really wanted to get it working for the sake of this video and have it uh you know like a phoenix rising from the ashes but simply not the case i think i've probably been tucked right up which, you know, I asked for, didn't I? I'm not asking for sympathy. I thought, you know, there's a saying, you can't con an honest John. I wasn't, you know, I'm not saying I'm dishonest. I wanted, I took a risk at £2,000, but I did think that the upside would be I could just get a key, we'd do a good service on it, change the fuel pump and all that sort of stuff, uh, fuel filter, and we'd have a decent car and I would make loads of money. But I'm not, I'm going to lose loads of money. So, you know, win some, you lose some, don't you? That's just the way it goes. So... We now have a Mini full of engine parts and it has no front end. It's riding very high on the front because, you know, it doesn't have an engine anymore. There we are, look. Empty little engine. Now, it would be tempting to put, like, the 5-litre V8 from the SO in there. But clearly we don't have time or the enthusiasm for doing any of that. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to scrap it straight away because if there's anyone out there, YouTuber or not, who wants to have a go at fixing it up, um, then, you know, I'm happy to let you have it and fix it up and pay you to do it even, um, to see this drive again. I don't think there'll be anyone who wants to, but if you do, then you can message me, uh, email me at joe at barramotors.co.uk. And, you know, at this point, I'll deliver it to you as is, and, you know, what have I got to lose? It's literally scrap currently. Yeah, that's it. Sadly, we didn't we didn't turn this one around, but what can, you, what can you do? As Toby said, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. I do like a cookie, just not this one. Anyway, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe because if you do, you could be in a chance of winning a £2,000 tag for your watch when we hit 75,000 subscribers. Don't forget to check out my raffle website, feelgoodcompetitions.com because by the time you watch this, I think there's going to be there's an RS5 on there being raffled off there's a polo r line being raffled off there's another tag warrior watch there's an omega moon swatch there's a thousand pounds cash there's a thousand pounds holiday voucher there's loads of stuff make sure you use the code toby 10 it's called it's called toby 10 because it's for toby he's getting a little cheeky commission off this because he works hard he's a good lad and he deserves a little bit of extra money but especially as he's blown up his golf and he needs to fix it so Make sure you do your purchases. Use Toby10. There's nothing in it for me. I lose 10%. You get 10% discount. And Toby gets paid. It's the lose-lose for me, really. A bit like this mini. But, you know, don't cry for me. Just get your tickets bought. Anyway, that's it. I'm waffling enough. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you on the next video.